welcome to the Borealis Experience. I'm your host Aurora and I'm so happy to be spending some time with you today. It's just a couple of 10 minutes or 15 minutes that my episodes last and it's really good to know that so many people benefit from that little break in between to-do list points or yeah in general in their busy life I don't know if you're riding a bicycle if you are on a bus on a train on an airplane on the way to work or at home on your couch and to be honest I don't care (laughs) where you bring me um, it is just uh, yeah very exciting to me that um, you listen to me here. Today I want to talk about how should we call it? Failure, unhappiness. Yeah. Do you set yourself up for unhappiness or do you live a pretty content life? I'm just drying off my nail polish. I just polished my nails Because I realized, oh, during recording here, no one is going to disturb me (laughs) and my nail polish can dry. Usually I always do it in between, uh, yeah, doing something else and then I have to help my dogs, I have to go clean something or have to go do something and that ruins my nail polish. So how do I set myself up for a successful nail polish session? I do it when I know nothing is going to interrupt me. (laughs) And that's my question for you today. Do you set yourself up for success in life or for failure? If you look at your state of contentment, how content are you? And how unhappy are you? There's people out there who have it all. They have a house, they have a relationship, they have a dog or some kind of pet, they have always a full fresh um, fridge full of food, Um, they have money in their bank account, they can travel, they have lots of friends. Yet, they still seem unhappy. And it's very fascinating because there's people out there in India and Africa and third world countries who live on the streets and maybe never possessed a car or something that you think brings so much joy and yet those people are the happiest and most content and grateful for what they have. And why is that? I think it happens early on that we get programmed into what is happiness, how is happiness supposed to look like, and what is unhappiness. And it is not that unhappy people want to be unhappy, but sometimes when unhappy people are in the same room with a happy person, there's like a dis dissonance. I don't know if you say that in English, but it's like two notes when you play the piano that absolutely don't go together. Um, the happy person is like talking, talking, talking and radiating and the unhappy person just sits there and is judgmental and listens but is more opinionated than anything else and why is that I believe strongly that a state of happiness is like a radio wave that you tune yourself into or like if you look at chemistry your body is in a very specific chemical um, composition And people who constantly want to be in that state of happiness know exactly how it feels 
know exactly how it gets disrupted and they do everything to stay in that state. And they're successful at it. And so they attract even more goodness and more success and more wealth into their life. And if there's people out there who went through depression or a phase of disappointments and hurt and wounds not healing properly or fast enough, then that person too is vibrating on a certain radio wave and has that certain chemical composition in their blood, in their system, that kind of keeps him in that state. Their thoughts are more dark and negative, and as I said earlier, when they see a person that is vibrating at a higher energy, they kind of look down to them and, and see them living in a Mickey Mouse Disneyland world instead of reality. And those people have it extremely hard to get out of that state because they keep attracting people in that vibrate at that same state and that kind of confirm to them that life is hard and life will always break your neck and yeah, you will be happy but every two years unhappiness will come over you and destroy everything again. So if you find yourself being a person who is tending to be more negative and attracting more shitty situations in your life. Meditation is really something that can help you out there and can get you out of that um, chemistry state or that radio wave. Um, you will begin to observe yourself, observe your thoughts especially, and you will see how in some situations you will be negative right away, you will slide into a depressive mode or into a self-destructive mode. And if you become aware of that, then you can make a choice and next time see it as a two-path way or kind of a, a junction where you decide to not go the regular road but to decide to go a more clear and happy road than you used to. So meditation is all about observing and knowing yourself. And can you imagine if you were to know yourself 100%? Would you not make better decisions? Would you not be with a partner that totally matches you? Would you not be happy at work and, and happy with your friendships and everything you have, I believe so. The more we know ourselves, the better person we can be out there and the better we can support others to do the same. It is so easy to blame the outside. It is so, so easy to blame your partner, your children, your circumstances even. But if you start to look at yourself and see what decisions you make on a daily basis, you can very quickly see that you can correct it and change it and start navigating into a new direction, a direction that is good for you and that brings you peace and happiness. I'm getting really emotional about that topic because for the longest time I've been in that dark place and I know exactly how it feels and how hopeless and powerless um, we can feel at times. But really when you see your thoughts floating by and don't engage in the usual blah, blah, blah and make it a choice that you want to be happy, that you want to see good in people that you want to trust, that you want to be successful, that you want to go out there and radiate goodness so that people come and support you and want to be around you um, instead of whining and 
like living in discontentment and pushing people away because they don't understand you anyway. If you really learn to understand yourself, you will also communicate differently. You will know your limits, you will know your boundaries, and you will know how to communicate them so that other people understand them. And in doing so, people will start and treat you differently. It is such a beautiful, beautiful thing to observe when people start knowing themselves and really tell people to F off <laughs> and to um, stand up for themselves. And I said, yeah, F off, not meaning to be rude and, and using swear words now, but to be very clear what you need in your life and what you don't. Can you imagine a life like that? Yeah, I hope that episode was not too chaotic I felt a huge need to talk about it today and it will only be the first episode about that topic um, because I have more to say about this but for now I just want you to look at yourself and see with everything you have at night do you go to bed and can be grateful for every single thing person circumstance you have in your life Or do you go to bed with a discontent mind and then wake up in the morning with a discontent mind? It all starts in the mind. And if we can achieve that you go to bed at night with a grateful soul and mind, then a huge positive change can be brought into your life very, very soon. Thank you so much for listening to the Borealis Experience here. I'm your host, Aurora, and I'll be out there for you tomorrow again. Bye-bye.